Hello, welcome to today's screencast, uh, Sports Psychology. The focus is on the catastrophe theory of arousal. So this is our third theory of arousal. Um, so as always, the best place to start when looking at a new theory of arousal is to have a look at the criticisms of the previous theory of arousal. So let's start there by just uh, uh, you know casting back to uh, inverted U theory. So when we were criticising the inverted U theory, we were particularly interested in the idea of the gradual decline in performance, okay? Because this theory was considered too simplistic in that its shape or the when arousal got too high, it said the performance led, there was a gradual decrease or decline in performance. Now that is considered too simplistic. And before I move on from that, most people who have took part in sport know that when you lose it, when your arousal goes too high, it's very rare that there's a gradual decline in performance. It is usually some kind of disaster, okay? Everything goes wrong and it certainly isn't a gradual fall down in performance. So that's the key thing, that's the key weakness. The second thing, and the second key focus really, is that this theory was criticized because it didn't take into account different types of arousal. Now, at the moment you'll be thinking, well, I, I don't really know different types of arousal, okay? So what we have to do then is, is to have a look at the third theory, which took, takes into account two separate types of arousal, okay? And we're gonna look at those uh, in a second. So we're gonna look at how two different types of arousal come together. You might remember the definition we used for arousal, which was the physiological and the psychological activation and readiness to perform. But every theory we've looked at so far has been solely focused on the physiological arousal. So we're going to have a look now at our second, our third theory and see how that will combat some of the limitations of the inverted U theory. So the theory is the catastrophe theory, okay, straight away. Okay, if we have a look then, the criticism here was uh, not always a gradual decline in performance. The catastrophe theory straight away combats that limitation because as you can see here, as arousal goes up, Performance goes up to an optimal midpoint, but in this case, there is an extreme decline. There is no gradual decline about that. It is a vertical descent in performance, which is known as a catastrophe theory. Now, you don't need to write anything at this point because we will look at it in a second. So you can see straight away, this theory addresses this weakness. Okay. Now, on top of that, what we have to know is that, so if we are answering that question, is it still a gradual decline? 100% no. This is an extreme decline. That's the word we use. That's the phrase we use. And then... We need to have an understanding then. What is it that causes this catastrophe or this extreme decline in performance? Well, what causes it is actually directly linked to the bottom limitation of the inverted U theory. The reason why we have this extreme decline and this new shape, I suppose, in terms of uh, performance decrease is due to the fact two arousal types coincide together at high levels to cause this extreme decline. So let's have a look at that in action. Uh, hopefully that has just given you a little bit of insight at how the new theory, uh, catastrophe theory, is more advanced in terms of uh, its relationship between performance and arousal. Let's have a look then. Uh, your notes can start from now. So we have the catastrophe theory, okay? So before we look at it, as I've said to you now, the difference between this theory and all the others is it takes into account two types of arousal. This is not your description of the theory. This is just giving you the tools to be able to understand why you're describing the theory in a certain way. Okay, so we need to understand the two types of arousal. In the definition of arousal, we talked about physiological and psychological uh, activation and readiness to perform. Now what we need to do is have an understanding of what physiological arousal and psychological arousal are called. Okay, so the first type of arousal, somatic arousal, is what you call physiological arousal. Okay, so anything to do with your heart rate, breathing rate, uh, body temperature, anything physical or physiological is called somatic arousal. Okay, on top of that, and we've looked at that really in all the theory so far. The thing we haven't looked at is our second type of arousal, and this is called cognitive arousal, and this refers to the psychological side of arousal. So this is a worry, panic, fear of failure, uh, those type of things, so anything that is in our brain. Um, so that is what we're looking at. These are the two types of arousal. So now we understand what the two types of arousal that are addressed within this theory are. This allows us now to be able to explain technically how a catastrophe takes place. So nice and easy to start with. First thing, the catastrophe theory says that as arousal increases, 
performance increases, sorry, as somatic arousal increases, performance increases to an optimal midpoint. So very similar to the inverted U, but we've just got to add this section here because it's somatic arousal, it's physiological arousal. That's good. More it increases, our performance increases till we get to this optimal midpoint. Now, the key difference now is that if high somatic arousal clashes with high cognitive arousal, this will lead to an extreme decline in performance, which is also known as a performance catastrophe. So you can see this in now. It's all the same. Somatic arousal increases, performance increases, up to an optimal midpoint. The key reason for this is because high somatic arousal coincides or clashes with high cognitive arousal, and that causes performance to have an extreme decline, a catastrophe. Okay. Now, what does that mean? How is that happening? You give yourself, I'm going to, I'll show you an example in lesson, but what it basically means is that a football player who is super pumped up before a game, in the first few minutes of a cup final, there's a good chance they're so worried about failing and not winning the game, they're pumped up physiologically, they're psyching themselves up. If both of those two things collide, it might mean they do a mistimed tackle or a dangerous tackle early in the game. So to put that into words, we could just go for this. For example, a football putting in a player putting in a dangerous tackle early in a cup final. Okay, and if you wanted to add some annotation to this, e.g., fear of losing the final, that's the uh, high cognitive anxiety and extremely high heart rate and breathing rate. This could be the increased um, somatic arousal, the physiological arousal. So that's our basic explanation done okay and the final thing just to put on here you have to make sure you put in you'll get an extra mark for this is having an understanding you should be able to see if i was going to ask you now out of both of these types of arousal which is the most detrimental to performance which one of the two is causing the big problem you should be able to see from what we've got here that it is cognitive arousal that causes the problem so there is a really important like kind of finishing point to this theory to say that if after you've had a catastrophe you can lower cognitive arousal your performance can increase again okay so that means the football player makes a dangerous tackle early on if he gets away with it and then lowers his fear of failure lowers his panic of not winning the game and calms down cognitively he can then increase his performance level again so i'll put that onto here now so a performer can increase performance again if they lower cognitive arousal after the catastrophe okay so after the bad tackle okay so that's your key sections can i ask you there's not loads on this you should be looking to make sure you have got your questions set up uh, this is the i would say it's the easiest in terms of length in the theory but in terms of technicality you've got to get it right you've got to have high somatic arousal clashing with high cognitive arousal you've got to have those two things in if they are not in you cannot get marks on this paper okay i'm well, not in this exam question sorry okay so good notes uh, and i'll see you uh, in the lesson and we'll have a look at the evaluation points after that thank you